First of all, I'd like to thank Mohammed, Arnon and Thierry for inviting me to participate again in this wonderful meeting, which unfortunately isn't in Paris, but we're very much there in spirit. These are my disclosures. Um, I have ownership in a company called Onc Therapeutics, as well as research support from a number of pharmaceutical companies. First of all, I'd like to give a little bit of background to natural killer cells. Um, unlike T cells, NK cells have an innate ability to rapidly recognize and kill malignant or virally infected cells without the need for prior sensitization. Instead of expressing rearranged antigen receptors, cytotoxicity is mediated by the net input of signals from an array of germline encoded activating and inhibitory receptors. And these receptors generally recognize classical or non-classical MHC class one or MHC class one like molecules expressed on the cell surface. Inhibitory receptors such as the Kier receptors, which recognize MHC class one molecules prevent killing of healthy cells by NK cells. Loss of MHC class one molecule expression, as you can see on the top right, which is a common occurrence in cancer cells enabling innovation of T cells, reduces inhibitory signaling and shifts the balance towards activation, resulting in killing of target cells by NK cells. As NK cells mature, engagement of inhibitory receptors by MHC class one molecules is thought to be important for optimal effector function. And this is referred to as NK education or licensing. On the other hand, if you look at the bottom left, under conditions of cellular stress, such as malignant transformation, or following exposure to chemotherapeutic agents, increased expression of, of ligands for NK cells uh, um, can, can induce sufficient activation to override inhibitory signals. Finally, in the bottom right, NK cells can also be strongly activated by engagement of FC gamma receptor 3A, which is also known as CD16, by the FC portion of antibodies when bound to a target cell antigen. However, apart from the cure inhibitory receptors, which bind to classical MHC class one antigens, NK cells express a variety of other inhibitory receptors, as well as an array of activating receptors as shown here. In addition, various factors within the tumor microenvironment can influence NK activation status. Once activated, NK cells kill target cells in various ways. Primarily, NK cells secrete perforin and granzyme to induce cell death. NK cells also ex express fast ligand and trail, which can directly induce apoptosis in target cells that express the FAS or trail receptors, DR4 or DR5. Trail-induced cell death receptor signaling has recently been shown to be important for optimal killing by CD19 CAR T cells, and studies using CRISPR knockouts also showed that death receptors are important for killing by NK cells. Finally, ADCC mediated by antibodies binding to CD16 is an important additional mechanism of killing. In addition to their direct cytotoxic effects, NK cells also play a very important role in kickstarting a subsequent adaptive immune response. This is achieved via the release of cytokines such as interferon gamma and TNF alpha promoting long-term immunity. However, NK cells are dysfunctional in myeloma, and with the transition from MGOS to multiple myeloma, there is a progressive loss of function in NK, in NK cells for multiple reasons, even though the numbers of NK cells are not reduced. Dysfunction is due to factors such as the decreased expression of activating receptors, as well as shedding of ligands for activating receptors, increased expression of inhibitory checkpoints on NK cells and their ligands, both on myeloma cells and immune suppressive cells within the tumor microenvironment, hypoxia and soluble immune suppressive factors such as lactate, PGE2, IL-6 and TGF-beta. For example, with disease progression, there's upregulation of inhibitory ligands such as HLA-E on the left and pdl one on the right, 
on myeloma cells, which can then inhibit NK cells by interacting with their receptors NKG2A and PD-1, respectively. Recent evidence from the MMRF COMPASS study suggests that strong expression of HLA-E on the surface of myeloma cells may be associated with inferior progression-free survival in patients with myeloma. My own group has a particular interest in the role of hypersilylation in immune evasion, and this is becoming an area of increasing interest in the whole field of immuno-oncology. Silylated ligands on the surface of normal cells can act as a kind of self-associated molecular pattern, enabling NK cells to distinguish self from pathogens via inhibitory receptors called SIGLEX. Hypersilylation of cancer cells, as you can see in the, in, in the left figure, um, left-hand figure, exploits this, leading to increased inhibition of NK cytotoxicity by SIGLEC7 and to a lesser extent SIGLEC9 receptors on NK cells. On the right-hand side, you can see that there are the SIGLECs on the NK cells contain immunotyrosine inhibitory motifs or ITIMs which activate phosphatases such as SHIP1 to inhibit activating signals in a similar fashion to the way PD-1 inhibits um, T cells or NK cells. We have shown that multiple myeloma cells are strongly silylated and express ligands for SIGLEX. Um, uh, and uh, with increasing uh, expression, these SIGLEX ligands are, are in fact upregulated or rather are, are induced by, um, by hypoxia. We also know that SIGLEC7 is strongly expressed on most bone marrow NK cells uh, from patients with multiple myeloma. And using two different approaches, one using a, an enzy enzymatic approach with um, a sialidase enzyme known as neuraminidase, and the other with the sial transferase inhibitor, we were able to sensitize myeloma cells to killing by primary NK cells, as shown here in the two upper panels. And interestingly, in the bottom left in, in C, figure C, you can see that the treatment with the cell transferase inhibitor also led to unmasking of CD38. And this um, was associated with enhanced ADCC in the presence of daratumumab on the bottom right, suggesting that in the absence of cell surface silylation and perhaps with increased CD38 expression, and there's enhanced uh, ADCC um, with daratumumab. As shown here, when we knocked out SIGLEX7, we saw significant enhancement of cytotoxicity. And while other mechanisms of sensitization may play a role, this suggests that at least in part, uh, the inhibition of NK cell function by silylation is likely to be due to engagement of SIGLEC7. We also found um, that, SIG, uh, that um, IL-6 can inhibit uh, the cytotoxicity of NK cells both directly and indirectly uh, via inhibition of signaling, as well as by upregulation of PDL1 and PDL2 on multiple myeloma cells. And in in vitro studies, we've been able to overcome this using IL-6 antagonists, suggesting that antibodies such as tocilizumab may have a role in cellular therapy of multiple myeloma beyond the treatment of cytokine release syndrome. Despite the fact uh, that endogenous NK cells are inherently dysfunctional, if sufficiently activated, they can still exert some tumor control and indeed play an important role in the mechanism of action of, a, of a mechanism of action of a number of drugs that we that we use in the treatment of multiple myeloma, and of these, the best known are the imids, which enhance uh, NK activation in a number of ways, including enhancing the secretion of interleukin two. Proteasome inhibitors are also known to enhance the function of NK cells, and this may be by the induction of ligands for the activating receptors NKG2D and DNAM1, as well as downregulating HLA-E and upregulating death receptor 5, thereby sensitizing to trail-mediated killing. Lodocyclophosphamide may also be able to enhance NK cell function by diminishing the numbers of regulatory T cells and perhaps by a number of other 
mechanisms, in, including inducing a secretory response from tumor cells. And as reported recently, completely independently of ADCC, daratumumab appears to be able to induce NK activation in a CD38 dependent manner, leading to subsequent macrophage activation, enhanced phagocytosis, and also um, leading to better T cell activation. However, given the inherent dysfunction of endogenous NK cells, there is growing interest in exploiting adoptive transfer of highly activated NK cells. And potential sources for NK cells in this, uh, uh, to be used in this manner include NK cell lines, peripheral blood, cord blood, and induced pluripotent stem cells. The NK cells derived from these sources can then be expanded, as shown in the, at the bottom of the figure, in the presence of a cytokine cocktail or with the use of a feeder layer, then genetically modified using viral and non-viral approaches, and then either directly infused into patients or cryopreserved for future use. While unmodified allogeneic NK cells do appear to have antimyeloma activity, this is modest uh, at best, and some enhancement of function would appear to be desirable. Many different modifications can be engineered into NK cells, such as high affinity FC receptors to enhance uh, the activity of monoclonal antibodies, chimeric antigen receptors, or deletion of checkpoint receptors to reduce inhibitory influences. It's also possible to uh, express um, cytokines constitutively to improve persistence and chemokine receptors to improve homing. And I'll now go on to discuss some of these approaches in NK cells. But before I do, you might ask, with CAR T cells now very close to receiving regulatory approval, whether we really need uh, alternative approaches with modalities such as NK cells. So there's no question that the initial responses seen with BCMA CAR T cells have been very impressive. However, with longer follow-up, um, as shown on the right-hand side here, there is no evidence of a plateau on the survival curve with the median survival of less than 18 months with BCMA CAR T cell therapy. Thus, while these advanced patients are clearly benefiting from the treatment, the curative potential of CAR T cells remains unclear. In addition, I think there are major limitations with this approach. Uh, if you go from sort of left to right in the figure here, and collecting adequate numbers of high quality T cells from heavily pretreated advanced stage myeloma patients can be challenging. In addition, the complexity of the manufacturing process means that it's difficult to provide CAR T cells in a timely fashion, and a proportion of patients end up not receiving their planned treatment. While allogeneic CAR T cells could overcome some of these issues, this would require a lot of gene editing to prevent graft versus host disease. Then, since CAR T cells are dependent on target antigen recognition, antigen loss or down modulation can lead to resistance. Finally, toxicity with CAR T cells is not insubstantial with potential for severe cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity. So challenges such as these have led to an increased focus on NK cells as an alternative platform for cellular immunotherapy. And I'm sure many of you have, will, will have seen the recent report in the New England Journal of Medicine from Katie Rosvani's group at the MD Anderson. And this has really um, uh, you know, greatly put the focus, I think, onto CAR NK cells as, as a potential um, treatment modality. In, the, in admittedly a small trial, she showed very promising results in patients with relapsed refractory non Hodgkin's lymphoma and CLL. And uh, on the top right, you can just see a before and after PET scan of one of the complete responders on that trial. Indeed, CAR T or rather CAR NK cells may have significant advantages over, over CAR T cells. Since NK cells don't cause graft versus host disease, they have the potential to be used as a true off-the-shelf allogeneic um, cell therapy. Since they don't rely on antigen recognition for killing, this may mitigate resistance due to antigen escape. And while the number of patients treated thus far is very small, they do appear to be effective and to have better toxicity profile with less likelihood 
of CRS or neurotoxicity compared to CAR T cells. Additionally, very large numbers of NK cells can be produced at a, a low cost, enabling multi-dosing. And given the favorable safety profile, the treatment could be administered in the outpatient setting. So this figure from a recent review highlights some of the potential targets for CARs and multiple myeloma. And of these, perhaps the, the best validated is CD38. And I'm now going to focus on this for a little while. Following progression um, uh, on daratumumab, um, the value of further targeting CD38 has been questioned. This was partly on the basis that CD38 levels were thought to be reduced on plasma cells in patients progressing on daratumumab. However, in, in this recent paper, you can see that um, in the, uh, on the right-hand side that uh, in patients who are progressing on daratumumab, there does indeed appear to be strong CD38 expression when you use a multi-epitope CD38 monoclonal, or, or monoclonal antibody, and, and that the CD38 expression appears to be maintained with progression, and that progression is, is more really due to immune exhaustion and a lack of sufficient effector cells. So potentially, therefore, the adoptive transfer of potent allogeneic NK cells along with daratumumab could recapture response in these patients. However, as NK cells express moderate amounts of CD38, which can go up on activation, they are rapidly depleted by daratumumab. This can be overcome by deletion of CD38. And at the last ASH meeting, Faith Therapeutics presented data generated using IPS-derived NK cells, which were modified to express a non-cleavable form of a high affinity CD16, along with a knockout of CD38. And as you can see on the left-hand side, using uh, CRISPR-Cas9, they were able to achieve a very efficient knockout of CD38. And on the right-hand side, you can see that the CD38 knockout was highly effective and eliminated fratricide induced by daratumumab. FATE are expected to file an IND on this product designated FT538 in the near future. And I think we're likely to see this in the clinic by the end of the year. Building on this um, um, product, um, FATE also plan to incorporate a BCMA car to provide a bispecific mode of killing along with CD, CD38 targeting, as well as incorporating an IL-15 receptor fusion to promote survival, proliferation, and persistence. And as shown uh, in this um, slide here, when combined with daratumumab, these BCMA CAR NK cells exhibit potent in vivo cytotoxicity. And that's perhaps uh, not unexpected in a xenograft model with immunodeficient mice. But one very important issue that remains to be addressed is the clinical safety of these cells. There is the potential that targeting CD38 with a high affinity antibody in the presence of very potent effector NK cells could lead to significant myelosuppression. Therefore, an alternative approach is to target CD38 with a CAR NK using an optimized CD38 antibody, which only binds to malignant plasma cells with high expression of CD38 with minimal on target of tumor effects. So working with Chinamutis and colleagues at VUMC in Amsterdam, we've developed a CD38 NK with these precise properties, which has shown activity against samples from patients refractory to daratumumab with minimal toxicity to normal hematopoietic cells. We believe that this CAR NK could be used to safely target CD38 in patients with multiple myeloma. Again, um, even though we're using an optimized CD38 CAR in primary NK cells, there is a risk of fratricide as CD38 is strongly upregulated during expansion. The CD38 knockout I showed you before, performed by FATE, was done in IPS cells. However, as shown here, we were able to effectively knock out CD38 in expanded primary NK cells using CRISPR Cas9, and this effectively eliminates the risk of fratricide. And over and above this, there's some evidence presented at the last DASH meeting 
that CD38 knockout may in fact enhance NK cell metabolism and, um, uh, and also provide increased resistance to oxidative stress um, um, uh, within the tumor microenvironment. Finally, adoptively transferred NK cells need to be able to traffic to the site of the tumor or the bone marrow as the case in multiple myeloma. And this is influenced by the expression of adhesion molecules and chemokine receptors, especially CXCR4 on the infused NK cells. Uh, this is from um, a recent publication um, by Rick Childs and Matthias Carlson's group showing that NK cells engineered to express a mutated form of CXCR4, which is seen in Quinn syndrome, in which CXCR4 is constitutively active, or more efficiently to the bone marrow and immune model. And this could potentially lead to better disease control. So finally, I hope I've managed to convince you that NK cells may become an important part of the treatment armamentarium for multiple myeloma in the near future. We may see a multi-targeted approach to the treatment of myeloma, incorporating multiple useful modalities to enhance cytotoxicity, persistence, the ability to overcome immune suppressive factors within the tumor microenvironment, and enhance homing to the bone marrow. We may even see combinations with CAR T cells, um, which um, could be synergistic um, and may lead to, to better outcomes. You can envisage, for example, rapid debulking with CAR T cells followed by, by a CAR NK approach to target uh, minimal residual disease and induce a durable uh, immune response, which isn't completely reliant on the, the um, antigen specificity of the CAR. Ultimately, uh, the goal, though, will be to develop safer, more effective off-the-shelf therapy for multiple myeloma with the aim of improving treatment or improving patient outcome. So uh, finally, I'd like to uh, thank you very much for your attention. I'd like to acknowledge the people in my lab and as well as my um, collaborators. And again, thank the organizers for including me in this uh, very special meeting. Thank you very much.